Sorry, my office is an absolute wreck, but I wanted to do this video and I also didn't want to come off as if like I always have my stuff together, which I feel like happens with a lot of YouTubers. Like you're in this like perfectly meticulous space. But today I wanted to talk about something that I wasn't quite sure I was even going to really talk about. One was because I had a mixed bag of feelings about it, really from the point that I bought it to um, shooting with it to being frustrated with the person I bought from it, bought it from, from Facebook Marketplace, if I can even speak correctly here. Today, I'm here to talk to you about the Leica Sumicron 50 millimeter F2 version three lens. Now this is it on my Leica M10. I'm gonna do uh, another review about this at another point, or at least a quick initial review. I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I've probably shot about four or 5,000 images through it. But with this little lens, so let me kind of tell you a little story about Facebook Marketplace and why it's important to look at the photographs, to ask all of the right questions, before hitting purchase uh, on a lens or sending someone money for a lens. I always have wanted to shoot with like a glass and to be honest, the Sumalux uh, version of the 50 millimeter 1.4 has always been a little bit out of my price range, but I wanted to try a Leica lens because I've had Voigtlanders, I've had Zeiss lenses, and all of those lenses are absolutely fantastic on the Leica. Um, but, you know, it just kind of felt like always like one of those things with not being, uh, not shooting a Leica body with a Leica lens. So this is probably one of the cheaper 50 millimeter lens that you can find. The version three is kind of, can just give you a little bit of history before I get into my actual transaction. The version three was built in like the 1960s and 70s. Uh, it's kind of like the stepchild of the Leica lenses. From what my understanding is, is like Leica changed the formula from the version two or the rigid to the version three. And of course, a lot of people didn't care very much for that. Uh, pretty much what they did in the version three version was they added uh, some elements in it to where it was a little bit more contrasty. It had a lot of different, um, slightly different uh, features than the previous version so <laughs> essentially uh, it kind of fell out of favor because at that time Nikon was like the new bad boy on the block they were like the marquee mark and this was like the new kids on the block uh, version different eras but you kind of get my point so let me go back <laughs> real quick to telling you about my experience of actually purchasing this lens I found this lens off of someone on Facebook marketplace and it was about $1,300 which is about on par for what this lens goes for. You can find them a little bit cheaper. You can find them a little bit more expensive, just kind of really depending upon how much money you're willing to spend. But I looked at the pictures, it looked great. Uh, you can obviously tell the person who took the photographs added some extra contrast, so the black paint looked a little blacker. The, um, all the numbers that you can see like right here were a little sharper, a little brighter. It looked like it was in fantastic condition. And then I received it and you know, I was super excited about getting it. I paid, uh, I the paid rush shipping to get it here within one day because I just don't like when I buy stuff for it to be sitting at USPS getting lost. So I always pay for overnight shipping. Uh, out of my own pocket, I don't make the, the seller do it, pay for it. But when I get the lens and it was packaged well, it you know, there was really nothing wrong with it. There was some um, small things that I, that I noticed right away. One, that the glass wasn't as black as it looked, or the body wasn't as black as it looked in the photographs. Um, and then when I moved the aperture blades, I could see ever so slightly some oil I'm kind of looking at it as I'm recording this on the aperture blades which I did not see when I purchased it now the person did say that it was in really good condition 
Uh, generally speaking, if I'm seeing oil on the aperture blades, I would not consider that good condition. I would make that absolutely apparent to the buyer that there were oil on the blades. Now, it's not extremely expensive to fix. There is a guy who works exclusively, Yi, I believe is his name is, who works exclusively on Leica lenses and Leica bodies. And it wasn't expensive, but it was going to cost me about $100 to have the oil taken off the off the aperture blades, but I was gonna be without the lens that I had just spent $1,300 on for about four months while I sent it out to get it CLE'd um, and cleaned and all that jazz. Well, I ended up not returning the lens and just keeping it. I should have returned it and gotten my money back, but I didn't. Another story for another day. So I remember putting this on my Leica N240 initially and going out and taking some photos with it. And some immediate things that I noticed with this particular lens compared to any of the Voigtlander or Zeiss lenses that I've owned in the past uh, was that the focus throw was really long. Like in order to get from close focus uh, to infinity, I had to take two gigantic turns to get there. Now that may be a not so big of an issue for you, but for me, sometimes when I'm moving quickly, I don't want to have to turn so far in order to find uh, the focus point that I'm looking. If I'm looking to focus towards affinity compared to where I'm at. Uh, one of the other things that I wasn't super, super crazy about this lens was that there, there is a click on the aperture, but it's not super, super defined like how it is in the Zeiss Sonar. Um, you can kind of feel it, but you can also kind of knock it off. Uh, like just for instance, earlier today I was shooting with this lens and I would, thought I was at f2 and I was actually at f2.8 because I had ever so slightly knocked the thing off. And generally I'm super cautious with making sure that I hear the clicks as I'm turning it to the aperture and I know exactly how many clicks I need to get to from f2 to f4 generally is the area with which I shoot this at. Every now and then I will shoot at f8 or f11, but because it has oil in the blades, I haven't really shot in it that far wide open no issues really that's not true if i'm being honest i have shot this at f11 and i haven't seen any issues with the, with any of the images that i've received from it now i've shot this on uh my leica m6 i have shot this with my leica m10 and my leica m240 uh and at first when i first saw the images uh oh and my konica hexar that's probably my favorite uh, body to shoot this with but my initial thoughts were like man the images are a little bit more contrasty they um, are a little bit more punchy than probably some of my other Zeiss lenses and obviously coming from the Zeiss sonar to the Sumicron version 3 you are going to see a difference in rendering of these images for starters the Zeiss sonar is in 1.5 this is at an F2. Now, I, I would think like the stop of light would not have been that drastic. And it isn't until you get into, as, as you could probably tell, until you get into some situations where uh, you actually need the extra stop of light. Like if you're shooting out at sunset and you're just losing light a lot faster, sometimes having a faster lens means you can shoot for a little while longer without having to jack up the ISO in order to get the images that you're looking for especially when you're shooting film. If you're shooting like a 100, 200, or 400 speed film and you're losing light quickly, it does become somewhat of a problem to keep up um, with this lens, with the speed that you, with the film speed that you have in your camera. Now, I, to be fair, I wanna be 100% fair about this lens. It's a great lens and I do really, really enjoy shooting with it. Initially, that first month, the first, I'd probably say three or four rolls, uh, probably that first three or 400 digital images that I shot with it, I was very, I don't know if it was because I had a poor buying experience with the buyer that kind of made me just kind of jaded towards this lens, or if it was because I didn't really care much for the images that I received with it, or if it was because I was so used to seeing images with my Zeiss Sonar and some of my other lenses. But uh, as with everything, I don't like to make a formal opinion about a lens or a piece of gear until at least I've shot about 10 to 15 rolls through it 
and I've shot at least a thousand uh, images with it, sometimes more than that. Sometimes I prefer not to really do a review on a lens until I've had four or five thousand images with it so I can really kind of figure out how to best use this lens. And like I've said to share before, I'm addicted to the 50 millimeter focal lens, so I'm willing to try anything in order to find the best lens to move forward. Now, is this lens as good as the Zeissonar? It's not, but it's about the same price. Sometimes you can get it for a little bit cheaper. And if you really just want to shoot a Leica body with a Leica lens, then this is probably the cheapest that you can get into in the 50 millimeter focal length. But after like shooting with it exclusively for the last, gosh, I don't know, 45 days, I really have kind of changed my mind on it. Is it a perfect lens? Absolutely not. Um, is it uh, the best lens uh, that you that money can buy? Probably not. I think you could probably get the Zeiss Sonar and be extremely happy with that lens. But, and I want to put this in like an explanatory comma, it still gets the job done. And if you can figure out how to work with the files and figure out what scenarios that you're shooting it in, it can actually really, really, really shine. And the fact that it's F2, it does focus a little bit closer than the Zeiss Sonar, so you can get some like awesome up close portraits where you can really utilize the F2. And the light fall off on the F2 is just, it's actually kind of dreamy. I actually like the way that it falls off at F2 on the Summicron than I do how it falls off on the Zeiss Sonar. I'll be doing another review between these two so you can kind of see images between the Zeiss Sonar and the Leica Summicron version 3. But it is a great little lens. I love, love how small it is. It is, like, let me tell you about a couple of positives. I love how small it is. I love the way the light falls off at F2. I do like the fact that it really creates with uh, an M10 or the Hexar RF or with the Leica M6, a really small package that you can kind of go out and shoot with uh, and just create and get excellent images out of. Things that I don't care much for, uh, it doesn't have a focus tab. Uh, you can buy one and add it on to it, but I mean, I really wish it had a focus tab. It would just make it easier to kind of get focus quicker if it had a focus tab versus having to turn the, the ring. And that may be also part of the problem. I'm so used to having some of my, uh, my other uh, uh, focus rings are kind of at the front of the lens. And that may be also probably why I bumped the, the F stop when I'm not attending to. But the, uh, if I had a focus tab, I would know that I'm reaching down for that focus tab and adding it. So you can add this on aftermarket. I believe you can find something off of Amazon. The other thing that I actually, like I've said before, I wish it didn't have such a long focus throw from point A to point B. I wish it was a little bit shorter that I can get to where I'm trying to get to quicker and faster without having to stop and turn. As you can kind of see, the lens all the way through to get to the focus point. And these are all like super small. They're minute in the grand scheme of things. But if you're looking for a Leica 50 lens, 50 millimeter lens, then I would recommend this. But if you don't want to spend the $1,300, you could probably find the Zeiss Sonar for maybe a little bit cheaper. Or you can even try uh, the other Zeiss lens that's like an F2. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. For the Sonar, uh, and then they have the Planar, I believe, is the uh, Zeiss F2 lens. You try either one of those, but I would, if you're into Leica lenses, you can definitely get this one. It's cheap. Like I said, it's like the stepchild of all the Leica 50 millimeter focal lens, the version three version. They did improve it upon the version four, and I believe the version five version of it as well. You can even try the rigid or the collapsible one that came with some of the older Leicas. But overall, like initially my opinion was like meh, and now my opinion on it is like, you know what, it's actually not that bad. And that's rare for me to say because I've had so many different Leica lenses over the years, or so many different M-mount lenses, not necessarily Leica lenses, M-mount lenses over the years that I've shot with. But I can tell you this, if you've shot the Summicron, and, or you've shot the Summilux, and then you've gone to the Summicron, I mean, gosh guys, the, the Summilux is just, it's the best 50 out there. Uh, I have that one too, and I'm gonna share my thoughts and ideas 
on on that lens here shortly but i just wanted to kind of come in and kind of tell you about this particular lens and kind of tell you about my buying experience uh, you definitely can give this one a shot i think you would be pleased with it but i would say hey just don't get it and shoot with it for a week i would get with it and kind of let the images kind of marinate and then kind of figuring out how you can what situations that this lens would best shine for you and your photography but overall i'm pleased with it i'm happy with it it's not a bad lens uh, i think you would enjoy it but yeah that's really it for this review guys sorry i felt like i was kind of like rambling and i just kind of really wanted to talk about this lens and tell you what my thoughts and about my buying experience and i hope you guys uh enjoy this video and i hope you have a great day sorry about my mess of the office and i will see you uh, on my next video thanks so much guys take care peace